Hi, and welcome to Lunch Break with Pastors. This is Associate Pastor Tony Gendula joining you for today's lunch break. This is kind of unique, um, but this is something that, yes, I'll confess where I got it from. <laughs> um, I was checking out our Facebook and social media. I was checking out, you know, the social media, and, and um, I have some friends, one particular friend. Um, she is a, a friend of the ministry, and she um, has a gift from God. And um, it's a very awesome gift. I don't want to say what it is, because I just want to show you that I have a lot of respect um, for this person. And not because of her gift, but how she uses it, and how the Lord has used it personally in my family. And um, she wrote something I thought was really cool. Very short. Um, you got to think about it type thing short. And, um, and my friend and I were discussing this yesterday. And she basically said, it is one thing, or I'm paraphrasing what she said, but it's like there's believing in God and there's believing God. And she wrote, there is a difference. <laughs> believing, believing in God and believing God. There is a difference. And um, I know that that's true. And I want to share a little bit on the word, an example from the word on that. You know, when it comes to, I believe in God, there is a verse in the Bible that says, you believe in God. This is James, right? You believe in God. That's good. You do well. So does the devil. <laughs> and he trembles. <laughs> so <laughs> there is a level of, of, of faith or relationship. I, I believe in God, you know? And then there is believing God. When you're in the situation, when you're in the circumstance, when you're in the battle, and you are believing God at that moment in your life. Not just, I believe in God, but I'm believing God right now. Let's, let's look at an example in the Word of God about that. The difference. See, you're believing Jesus is God in this situation. Not just I believe Jesus is God, but I'm believing Jesus is God right now. now let's look at an example in the Word. John 11, verses 22 through 26. This is where Lazarus had died, and Jesus spoke of it in a language that we need to adopt. Um, he had said, um, somebody gave him a report. He was in another part of, uh, I guess, Israel. <laughs> and somebody gave him a report that Lazarus was sick. Lazarus was very close. Lazarus and his household, Mary and Martha, very close to Jesus. Um, they were personal friends of him and supporters of the ministry, and he loved them. And because he was a man, a person, he experienced all these things in a physical body, experience these things. So he finds out Lazarus is sick, and, he, and on purpose stays where he is and doesn't go to Lazarus. So the disciples kind of interpret this as whatever way they interpret it. Here's the backstory. Um, and anyway, you know, I just remembered, I'm supposed to tell you that if you want to give to the work of ministry, you hit the shop now button, takes you to the donate now at mfhlv.com because we do stuff in the community to support um, our community. Praise God. Okay, back to the story. All right, a little commercial there. All right, so the disciples basically, um, Jesus, they hear Jesus speak again, saying, I'm gonna go to Lazarus now. Um, and, and I forget how the news came to him, but basically he, he reported to them, you know, or the, he, he, he brought it across like this, that he was sleeping, that Lazarus is sleeping. That's what he said. Lazarus sleeps. And I'm going to go wake him. <laughs> Who thinks like that? God. Who talks like that? God. And, and the disciples are like, Lord, if he's sleeping, he's recovering. He's doing good. You know, that's great. You don't need to wake. Don't wake him up. He's sleeping. His body's healing. Lord, we don't. And Jesus just spoke to him and said, Lazarus is dead. <laughs> And I'm glad for your sakes that I didn't go down there. <laughs> and they're like, Lazarus is dead. Why did you, you know, why did you say he was dead? Because that's how God thinks. We look at his death as the ultimate end. And he 
doesn't. He made us. Back to the story. He's now before Mary and Martha. They're weeping. Jesus is crying. Jesus is weeping because of, of what they're experiencing. And Martha says to him in verse 22, John eleven twenty two, 22, I know, even now, I know, I believe in God, that whatsoever you will ask of God, God will give it to thee. Whatever you ask of God. She believed in Jesus. She believed in God. But she wasn't believing God. In fact, if you look a little study on the word ask, it means from an inferior to a superior. Like from a child requesting something from their parent. I believe, even now, whatever you ask of God, he will give it to you. But she wasn't believing God. And we know that because God spoke to her directly about it. Jesus said unto her, your brother shall rise again, period. Her answer, as many of us would, and we think, but we don't think quite like he does. <laughs> because he is God. She wasn't believing Jesus is God. Martha said to him, unto him, I know. See, I believe in God. I know he shall rise again, you know, in the resurrection. Because you taught us about that. At the last day, because we know that's happening. I know, I believe in God. I know that'll happen. Jesus, or God, answered her. The same God who said, your brother shall rise again. See, this is believing God. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Lazarus had more faith in Jesus being God than Martha did. Lazarus, who was dead, hear this, had more faith than Martha, who said, I believe in God. I'm not discounting her love or compassion. That's her brother, but there is a difference between I believe in God and believing God. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And so, and whosoever lives <laughs> and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? <laughs> that's, that's how it's written. That's how, and whosoever lives, and believes in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe on God? Do you believe on the resurrection and the life? God who speaks to those that are not as though they were. That's believing in God. Now I know it's a relationship. I know God brings us to this point. But he was bringing Martha to that point right then and there. Because Martha was a disciple of Jesus. And she needed to know who she was talking to. And he let her know who she's talking to. And many times we have to understand who we're talking to. And that's when Jesus lets us know he is the resurrection and the life. And if a person believes in him, even though they were dead, like Lazarus was, yet shall live. And the miracle happened. He called forth. He came to wake him up. Look at the perspective of God. When we believe like he believes. The Bible says have faith in God, but it actually says, as you study it, have the God type of faith. Where he manifests himself, who he is. Jesus didn't pray a lot of times when he ministered. He commanded things. He spent time in prayer before. He was called to these things, but when he spoke, he commanded things. And the Jews were shocked because he taught as one that had authority. Not like their religious leaders taught who believed in God. But when God came on the scene, 
they didn't recognize him. There's a difference. And we want that difference in our lives, inside of us. Because Christ is in us, the hope of glory. The kingdom of God is within us. There's awesome potential in us, the hope of glory. There's a difference between believing in God and believing God. God bless you. We love you. <laughs> Jesus is the Lord. Our pastors love you from my father's house. And we're believing God with you and for you and for his purpose in Las Vegas, in America, and in the world. Today is a day of, of um, well, no, I won't put it like that. God bless you. Have an awesome weekend. A kiss to the king.